powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Tonight, a follow up to yesterday's suspicious package left outside the Q2 studios. Five hours of uncertainty that ended with law enforcement destroying the tub and its contents. It came to a close after police questioned the man who left it on the Q2 stairwell. The Billings Police Bomb Squad was concerned the plastic tub may contain incendiary items, so they took action deploying a robot to the Q2 entrance. After neutralizing the tub, police determined it did not contain any dangerous items. The items belong to a man who lives in the downtown area, and this morning that man was confronted by police after he showed up near the station again. The 40-year-old was cooperative with authorities and ended up voluntarily going with police for mental health treatment. He told officers he is a Star Wars fan and that the devices in the plastic box were his homemade lightsabers. Now he added that he was recently robbed and he never intended to disrupt or cause harm. The man told police he left the box at the station because it has cameras and he felt the items would be safe. Police are not identifying the man as he is not facing criminal charges. Today we'd like to thank everyone and express gratitude to those who reached out to us at our station to offer words of support and encouragement. In other news tonight, a 16-year-old Billings boy is now facing charges of deliberate homicide and assault with a weapon for causing the death of a 20-year-old woman in a crash in the Billings Heights back on the 23rd of September. Prosecutors say Jacob Standing Elk was suicidal and intoxicated prior to crashing into Haley Hudsonbyler's car, killing her and injuring another woman. Now, Standing Elk has been in the hospital since the crash, but appeared in adult district court Monday to face charges. Court documents say Standing Elk was driving drunk and texting friends, saying he didn't want to live anymore and wanted to die. Officials say Standing Elk hit a speed of 124 miles an hour on Wicks Lane just seconds before striking Hudson Byler's uh, car, which was stopped at a red light. Police found an empty champagne bottle and a handwritten note describing a sex assault allegation against Standing Elk in his car. Standing Elk's next court appearance is set for the 21st of November. At that time, prosecutors will decide if he should be tried as a youth in this case. One man is dead after a rollover crash on I-90 east of Billings this afternoon. The accident reported just after noon near the Prior Creek Road exit. The Montana Highway Patrol says the driver overcorrected. The car went off the side of the road, rolled through a ditch, and came to a stop at a nearby fence. The 84-year-old male passenger was flown to the hospital, but he died from his injuries. The driver, a 36-year-old woman, was transported by ambulance with minor injuries. Neither of the occupants were wearing seatbelts at the time of the crash. A class action lawsuit against Remington Arms Company is now final. The final step comes 18 years after the death of nine-year-old Gus Barber. The young boy was killed in a hunting accident October 23rd of 2000. Gus Barber's mother said her Remington Model 700 rifle went off as she was unloading it. She says her finger was away from the trigger. Gus was struck by the bullet. While Remington has never admitted the guns are defective, millions of owners of the Model 700 rifle and other guns with similar designs now have 18 months to file for a free replacement of their guns' triggers. Triggers the Barber family maintains are defective. It, it's uh, the last, for the most part, the last milestone I had to achieve. Uh, now Remington is agreeing to retrofit new trigger mechanisms to uh, an estimated 7.5 million rifles and the fix is there and I want the public to be aware uh, that if there was ever a time uh, where they had any questions in their mind now they can have their rifles fixed free of charge. Now the settlement was final on October 23rd. Richard Barber has been documenting his journey on a Facebook page where he shares new information he finds out about Remington rifles. U.S. Interior Secretary Ryan Zinke now finds himself under investigation by the U.S. Justice Department. According to CNN and The Washington Post, the former Montana congressman is under investigation for possibly using his office for personal gain. Sources familiar with the investigation say it follows a referral from the Interior's Inspector General. The full extent of the inquiry, though, is unclear. Responding to the news today, Zinke said he has not been contacted by the Justice Department and calls this newest development, quote, another politically driven investigation that has no merit. Zinke's conduct in office has been the subject of at least three probes by the Interior's Inspector General. That includes his involvement in a Montana land deal, 
and a decision not to grant approval to two tribes who are wanting to run a casino in Connecticut. At this point, it is unclear which probe has been sent to the Justice Department. With the midterm election just one week away, Forward Montana is encouraging students to get out and vote. Today, Forward Montana hosts its fourth annual Student Voter Day at MSUB to celebrate civic engagement on campuses and help students make their voices heard at the polls. Forward Montana mobilizes and tries to engage young Montanans to use the democratic process to improve their lives and the lives of fellow Montanans. Uh, Michael Nelson, the field manager with Forward Montana, says student voters are frequently first-time voters. As a result, he says sometimes they have less access to information about the candidates. Recent polling has just shown that it's going to be extremely tight, and young people have a chance to really decide what the next Congress looks like and what our, like, <laughs> what our delegation is going to look like from Montana. So we're asking young folks to utilize their, utilize their power. The issues on the ballot this year in particular matter to young Montanans, like the six mil levy, which directly affects higher education costs. So a student voter day um, definitely has a strong connection to that issue. A student voter day was hosted by Forward Montana on canvases all across the state. A Billings man is on a mission to help change the lives of countless animals and people in Puerto Rico. Now the goal is to vaccinate and spay or neuter 20,000 dogs and cats in the hurricane ravished territory. It will be the second time Dave Polly has journeyed to the area since the storm struck. During the first round of the spay-a-thon for Puerto Rico, more than 5,500 animals were fixed. Polly says when you help the animals, you also help the people. There's a great humanitarian effort that these dogs and cats are getting the medicine and the surgeries that they need, but there's also a huge public safety issue. So there's going to be less dog bites. There's going to be less unneutered males roaming the streets and causing accidents. There's going to be less conflict between dogs and horses. So from a baseline of helping the critters to the peak of really changing the animal dynamics of that islands, of the islands, um, is huge. Now, even before Hurricane Maria struck, Puerto Rico's stray population had already reached crisis levels, but the situation became even worse afterwards because many families were forced to abandon their pets. Still to come on tonight's 530 News, football remains a wildly popular sport, but there's growing concern about the sport's long-term damage on young players. Tonight, we take a closer look. And later in sports, Scott shows us how Q2's Athletes of the Week closed out a magical soccer run. And coming up in the weather, we're just kind of in between weather disturbances. Now your next storm is moving in from the west, but it could fall apart before it even gets to us. We'll tell you what the chances are coming up right after this. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.